Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I'm going to attempt to show you how to cook a scallop ramen, one of my favorite dishes that I've ever created in the kitchen. I want to dedicate this video to a friend of ours, Ali. She's 33, she gave us some ramen bowls over Christmas and about a week later she was diagnosed with leukemia and that's just a horrible thing to have at 33. It's generally a disease that affects young children or very old people. So she's 33, she's basically my age. I know from when I lost my mum to breast cancer and eventually brain cancer about three years ago, the burden on the family, not only emotionally but financially, is really taxing. So I'm gonna put a GoFundMe link to raise some money for her because she can't work at the moment. If you feel like you can give anything, even a pound, it all helps. And yeah, hopefully in six months time, we can get her on a video uh, fully recovered She's got a great prognosis. And without further ado, let's try and find some scallops. The water's pretty much black. I don't hold any high hopes, but I wanted to make this video for Ali. So let's go. Testing out this new big float today that I got in Denmark. Try and put some scallops on the top of it so it'll be a bit easier to tow in. Conditions look perfect, don't they? You're sending me out into the deep blue in the middle of winter in the Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> I wish it was blue, but it's not. I was pleasantly surprised how clean the water was. As usual when shore diving, I like to anchor my float with a drop weight. This way I can use the float as a reference point and I know which ground I've covered. Plenty of visibility to see some shells. Once you get rid of the first ones off the list, the next ones just flow a bit easier, the pressure's off. Straight back down to find a few more. Although this guy was well over the 100mm minimum size for the area, it was on the smaller side so I left it be so it could grow a little bit bigger for next time. It's unusual to find just a single scallop. If you find one, keep your eyes peeled, there's often a few around. Unfortunately, Hannah's sinuses weren't playing the game today. Although she actually probably did way more exercise than me by dragging the float around and picking up the scallops off me when I got to the surface. An hour in eight and a half degree water. Not the most fun activity in February in the UK. We have achieved what we came to do. So we've got some scallops, and we'll show you how to cook a ramen a little bit later. Unfortunately, Hannah Sinus is not playing the game today, but we can roll some clips on from the summer where she actually got her first scallops ever on her own. You could see them from the surface. It was, it was insane. Just watch the footage. Back of the kitchen now, the first step to your scallop ramen is to shuck the scallops. I've done this many times on my channel, but for those of you that are new, I will show you again. This time we're going to keep the skirts to use them in the broth to make the actual stock for the ramen. Easiest way when the scallops have opened up a little bit, get a knife like this about four inches long, run it under the flat section of the shell, releases the adductor muscle from the top, pops open like so. We're going to keep the skirt this time because we're going to make a broth with the skirt and some of the roe. So there's your clean adductor muscle. 
This part here is the intestinal tract that connects to the row. We're not gonna use that part tonight, but we'll use these little bits of skirt here, put them in the pot, boil them up, make a nice broth for the ramen. That little gristly bit's not very good to eat on the side of the scallop, but it's really good to make the broth with. So in here, I've just got a few of the rows, the skirts and stuff. I'm just gonna boil that down for about 15, 20 minutes until it's all sort of cooked a little bit. Then I'll strain it and use that for the base of the ramen broth, which will be in this big one here. The basis for the actual broth that you're going to have in your ramen consists of a little bit of the scallop broth here, some hot water, soy, a little bit of dark soy, Chinese five spice, which is the absolute key ingredient, some chili flakes, and what else do I put in there? Oh, sesame oil, garlic, and ginger. Now these proportions are a little bit loose, but this is what I do. About that much soy, dark soy, only a little bit of the dark soy, I don't like too much of that. A bit of sesame oil, chili flakes, and Chinese five spice. Ramen is one of those dishes that involves a lot of multitasking. So while the shiitakes and tomatoes are cooking, I'm going to add the scallop broth to the main broth. So we don't want these pieces into the main broth, but we want all that scallopy goodness in there. So these are some of the little extra bits of scallop in there. Generally pretty overcooked once you boil them down like that, but mm. still scallopy, delicious and good. But most of the flavor has come out of this into the broth. Keep this simmering away. You want the garlic and the ginger to cook inside the pot as well because you eat those and they taste delicious. Although Hannah hates the ginger. This is a dehydrated seaweed called wakame that we're going to add to the ramen. What you have to do with this is bloom it in a bowl of lukewarm water and it will expand about 10 times the size of that. So it's pretty cool to see. The next step now is the noodles. You can buy ramen noodles basically everywhere these days. I have no particular fondness of any, but I bought a kilo here for about three quid just get some ramen noodles, that's what you need. You want to cook the noodles a little bit before you start the scallops because the scallops will take two minutes. Get the olive oil and the butter in the pan really hot, put that in there with the scallops and the roe, fry those up, and then we assemble the ramen. Noodles into the bowls. Wakami. Presentation is very important in Japanese cuisine, something I'm not yet very good at. Broth. Give it a bit of a stir to kick up all the garlic and ginger. Get all your goody bits out with a sieve. So then add your garlic and ginger in the center. One piece of tomato per plate. Bowl rather. Shiitake's on the side here. One scallop. Try and slot these rows on top in between. Spring onion, shallots as a garnish over the top. You don't have to go too crazy on this. And then the final touch, a snifter of black sesame. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is scallop ramen. this a go. Mm. Where to start? I think I'm going to start with a little bit of roe and wakame. Mm. 
so freaking good. Eight hours driving, one hour diving for this amazing recipe inspired by Ali. The link for the GoFundMe is in the description like I mentioned at the start of the video. If you've got time to check that out, that would be very much appreciated. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. You always have to do a little taste of the broth to make sure that it's where it needs to be. It's where it needs to be.